Bayern. So it's good, I mean, these last two tournaments, the 200k went well third, and now it's the, it's the 100k one left. They started 3 p.m., this main event 100k, and now it's 9 p.m. 65 entries so far, there's 46 players left. I think it's gonna get around 100, 100 entry fees. Uh, players can still buy in tomorrow. And that's it, then. Thank you so much. Yeah, the main event 100k is, a, is another three-day event, which means that the structure is really good. We have a lot of play. These are one of the nicest, nicest tournaments, at least for me. Everyone's in a break? In our break? For 15 more minutes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm so tired. Yeah, let's just see, we might be able to do this one interview that I have to get done. He's interviewing the champion of the Invitational Tournament, Ramin Hachiev, right now. So, the next online. So we get these tickets. This ticket, you get chips. You choose your table. Should I choose or what? Yeah, I just go. Yeah, this feels good. This one. Table seven. seven. Okay. Thank you very much. We're going straight to the TV. Break of the day in the in the main event, which is my first break. I had a good start. We started with 250, and I think I have around 380. So a good start. So here we are um, with uh, Vera Holtz. Anyone who has followed uh, poker last 10 years knows that he has been one of the biggest crushers in tournaments. How much are tournaments when it's actually? 40, 40, 40 million, it's pretty good. <laughs> I'm not even on the halfway. Oh, I think I'm you, close you get there. No. You just I think so. Yeah, I think I'm about close to 20, yeah. yeah. I would like to ask a few questions. Um, we can both agree that poker is booming Please. again. Light bars, oh, okay. and we're breaking all the numbers everywhere in all the tournaments and also high rollers and so on. But there's been little changes with rules in the recent years. There's been shot clock implemented, which has been now adjusted to different, to a little bit quicker and so on. But is there anything that you would like to add or take off with the current rules or the way the game has been? I do like the change to big blind anti, I like the shot block. I, ge I generally think the faster the game gets, the better it is for the game, to be honest. Like, especially live, I think a big part is you wait. Like, you wait for the to finish and so on. So, actually, I think that even if you would change the game to just be much faster, people would complain in the beginning, but then everyone would adapt. Yeah, so. it's the same as when we started with the shot block, people were terrified yeah. at 30 seconds. I completely agree with you, and uh, I always think of from the perspective that how people view it from the television, from the stream. This is what makes poker popular. It's an entertainment, it's also a fun game that we play because it's very satisfying as a comp competing against other humans in us. A sport of a brain, I call it. Um, anyways, I have another question that I think many people are wondering that when you are new to poker, you want to improve your level. I know that you've been involved with building poker schools. What would you recommend for a player, first of all, to hmm, which way? Because people learn in different ways. I mean, I think poker is like a, it's like an onion, right? You, you, it's an, an infinity onion. You start in the beginning, you know almost nothing. You start to understand a little bit the cards. And I, I think that for me, this first really big part is you have to understand the fundamentals. This, I think there's so much 
stuff out there where they explain you a bit, like the, the really baseline strategy, you understand the rules, you understand how the game is working. After that, I think personally the best way is to uh, just like not try to go into too technical, but to um, understand the logics of the game. So uh, also when I explain someone, I don't say, oh, you need, you know, six combos of this, yeah. but more like, you know, in this situation, for example, you know, he has the stronger range, that's why you play more passive. So more like, ah, oh, okay, I'm weaker, he's stronger, so here's the advantage. And, and I think that is actually something people can pick up really fast, is like, okay, is this good for you, is it good for me? And, and play accordingly and and I personally learn the most watching these streams and I think a lot of players do is watch cards up the best players in the world yeah. watch them play see what they do and don't go in like oh this is bad this is bad but try to understand why is he doing this why is he yeah. doing that and that's how I started uh, moving up and and I learned the most from watching best players play so I think that's one of the coolest things so I've been wondering that when there's highly motivated people, and they want to learn and they don't improve that why they don't improve it's been like interesting for me that that's what people are wondering many times that. i mean to be honest i think uh, very often it's because people aren't trying i think in most other areas like well, let's say you go play table tennis with your friends you know one hour every day and you yeah. well, after two years you're like maybe a bit better but not yeah. versus you go get a coach you yeah. you know he teaches you the proper technique the second example you see like the exponential progression where because you have good technique you start playing much better versus you play for fun with your friends where you get a little bit better. I think that in poker is the same. Some people just play for fun, they play for two, yeah. three, four years, they think why am I not getting better? Yeah, it's because you probably yeah. haven't really uh, tried to improve that much. So It was really nice to talk to you and uh, all the best luck in the main event. Oh well, oh well, it's a long day and it's, I'm happy it's over. I got six and a half hours sleep last night, which was pretty good. Got workout in, played that final table and uh, finished third, jumped into this main event. Uh, gotta get some rest now and we'll see. Hopefully can get, make another big run on, on this one. Today is day two in the in the main event, and I have 23 big blinds, which is not a lot, obviously. It's almost a starting stack, just uh, two big blinds less than starting stack. Yeah. I lost a big party yesterday with Ace King against Nines, all in three against founder of Triton Paul Poir, who's a true true gentleman. Uh, the big thanks for Paul for uh, making all this happening. I'm never upset when losing a hand against him, so he has some tips now, and uh, I have some work to do. I would say the biggest misconceptions about poker players is that we would be very unhealthy people. Um, we would take way more risk in life than an average person. I would completely disagree in a way that everything is pretty well calculated. What we do, everything, everything that a poker player does when he plays, there's a reason why. Like everything. When you enter a tournament, there's a reason why you play this tournament because the field is this level, you have this much of value. Every decision decision you make when you raise, call, fold, we are able to answer why we do that. Nowadays you have to be more complete than, than back in the days. Now the little things matter much more, uh, that gives you advantage over your opponent. Now you see all the best players or these players that play the highest games, highest tournaments. You see them working out on daily basis. You see them having better nutrition than before. They understand that the brain functioning is important. There is so much that goes to the game. I was so late today, I didn't want to start training, so they were going to be slow to start because uh, registration is closing now, so people are still buying in, so... Anyways, it's always a sweat when you have 23 big blinds, everything is a big deal, one big blind or small blind, it's big
Got lots of outs. Mm -hmm. And you just have to go away with your food. Good luck, guys. Here I am on the rail. No result in the main event 100k. So this was the only tournament that kind of ended up early for me. Um, I didn't have so many chips to play today. Started with 23 big blinds and went out, went out. That's it. Uh, sometimes it's so much nicer to go out earlier instead of you can play a full day and then go out just before the money. So now I actually have a free day. I can go to the beach. I can go to a nice restaurant or whatever I decide to do. It's been very uh, demanding last 11 days of poker. 12 hour days. Um, even I played one day on top of the tournaments. I played cash game, uh, streamed cash game here. Yo Viral, my friend organized and uh, we played till 3.30 a.m. that day. So yeah, physically very demanding and obviously mentally also very tiring. If I sum up this Triton, Triton uh, trip to Cyprus, this has been, I think, the best tournament series for me that I've ever had. Played eight tournaments, cast in four of them, and seven of them I finished top 30. Even those three that I didn't cash, I was really close to cash. And I was about seven from the money and eight from the money or something like that. I ran pretty poorly on, on the 40K, 50K and 75K that I did not cash. I lost very big pots in situations where I had 50% hand to win or, or some, something similar. Similar to that and those pots would have been, you know, would have put me on a very good position. Like we're talking about having like double of the average stack or one and a half times the average stack in, in all of them. And, uh, but yeah, that's tournament poker and we all know that you need to win those hands. And uh, luckily it all evened out on this uh, largest one, this 200K that I consider myself very fortunate that I was last in chips when I was eight players left and surviving with very few big blinds um, and finishing third. That was very amazing result from this, looking at from this perspective. So 2.1 million is a great, great score. And uh, yeah, I'm feeling really good. I, I have one tournament actually left to play. It's 30,000 buying Pod Limit Omaha, which is a different game. I like Pod Limit Omaha. It's a game that I used to play a lot, cash games. And um, it plays a little bit different. We have four cards instead of two cards. And you always have to use two cards to play on the showdown. And, but yeah, after this, uh, these tournaments, I'll be very happy to fly straight to Vegas. It's one of my favorite places. Um, I'll, I will be playing just cash games there for the next uh, next three weeks. I'll play the main event in the World, World Series. It's something I enjoy doing. It's gonna get 10,000 players and winner is gonna get close to 10 million. And it's one of those poker experiences that everyone would like to go deep in that tournament. It's gonna last, I think, like 11 days of play. Yeah, that would be a very interesting one. It's kind of a dream to make the final table on this tournament. Had a chance to come to the beach, second time actually in the last 12 days when I had time to do this. And yeah, it's just good to come outside to just get some sun and relax a little bit. Being a professional poker player, it's obviously quite a unique way of making a living. It has a lot of advantages, obviously, and uh, a lot of disadvantages. It's definitely not for everyone, the lifestyle, what comes with it. Positive things first, so you get to be your own boss. You decide where you're gonna go, what you're gonna play, how you're gonna organize your life around poker. So you don't have to be on anyone else's schedule. Only when you, when you start to play a tournament, you have to play based on the tournament schedule. Uh, that's the only thing that is required. So cast games, you can come and go. Sometimes you can just play one hour and go, even less sometimes if you don't feel like it. You can take breaks. That's actually one of the biggest skills in being a cash game player is that once you can really decide when to play, that you should really try to play only when you feel good. When you don't feel great and it's not 
you know, things are not good in your life, that's when you should really stay away from the game. Very positive thing is that you get to travel around the world if you choose to. So there's poker all over the world. Nowadays, I mean, poker is so big, there's statistics that there's more than 100 million people who play poker which is such a large number. Every single city, almost every place around the world, there's private poker games in every city. So that's, a, that's one really nice thing that you get to travel. Uh, I, I've got to travel all over the world in the last 20 years of playing professionally. And then you obviously make a lot of friends in, around the world. So you build really nice networks. And I, I see that as a, as a school of life. And one of the most important things that you really go by yourself to see how it is in other places. Obviously, money can come as a byproduct. If you manage to be very successful as a, as a poker player, then you might be able to make very good living. If you look at the masses, there's incredible amount of professional poker players around the world. Since there's 100 million people playing and there's a lot of games everywhere, like there's a lot of players that are not really listed as professional poker players, but they're making like whatever, 10K a month averagely and they pay their bills and pay their taxes and uh, they're making good living and they enjoy doing that. For any human being, there's a very good opportunity with playing poker and competing to learn more about yourself. You get to experience failures, losses, success, winnings, and all these things are gonna give you different emotions. How you will handle yourself when, when you lost, when you made a bad play, when you won, how, how did that feel? All these things, so it's, poker is also a game that it's a never-ending improvement like this. The game is so complex that you can always keep improving. So yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of positive things if I think of some negative sides of being a poker player or professional one, I can see it as a big challenge if you have a family, for example, and you need to travel and play. That can be pretty challenging or some people, if they, they might struggle with their relationships, if they are traveling half a year, for example, and, um, and so it's not, a, it's not for everyone. And um, also like, depending on the players is also like depending how much they really spend time like I'm playing a lot and I'm working hard on my game all the time and and like I have weeks that I literally have no time for anything else like here in Triton it's very few moments when I have an extra 30 minutes or one hour in the evening when it's over. Also in Vegas, when we play cash every day, the days just go so fast. You just get a quick workout, you play all day, come home, eat and go sleep, and you do it again and again. Days and weeks go so fast. But the most important thing I think for anyone is that if you really do something that you love and enjoy doing, like then it doesn't feel like it's your work. I love what I do, and I think that's also the key that I really haven't seen anyone being able to play for at least for a long time on a on high level that wouldn't love playing. I think there's a thing that's regarding your motivation and love to the game that will limit your learning and your performing uh, if you don't really love love what you, what you do and love playing. So how it all started, basically I put money online in 1999. I put money on December on online sites, uh, 200 euro. $200 actually, dollars. And I started to play first time online in my life. I only played in Casino Helsinki before, some small cash games, and I managed to turn that $200 with small cash games to like 30,000 in two months. And that was year 2000. So yeah, now when I think about it now, I played professionally 23 years for now. That's how long I've been playing professionally. Um, so that was a big turning point for me. Um, and that was a big year because I improved a lot since I started to win, I started to play more. I ended up that year with a bankroll of about 120,000. Buildings from small games, which was quite life-changing money for me. Um, I never had money when I, was, when I was young, growing up in Finland, never, never had money then. So obviously there's been many moments where I've been doubting myself, when I had to do some really serious re reality checks. There's been some serious downswings also, but uh, yeah, it's, it's very challenging because poker has decent amount of luck, which means that you can go quite a long time sometimes with losing and quite a long with winning. There's been moments where I hit quite big downswings with, uh, with my bankroll and I was 
I had to do quite a bit analyzing that how I feel that what what really gives me advantage over my opponents. It's not it's never easy, and I've seen a lot of people, a lot of players that they lose their confidence when they hit a long downswing. That's one of the worst things that a poker player can can do is lose their confidence. Because it's all about making right decisions and if you're not confident, you're, you're doubting yourself and it's not going to usually be a, ending up well. But also overconfidence can hurt you big time also and that happens also when people go on the big winning streaks and they get overconfident and they start playing usually too aggressive and, and uh, at some point they're going to have to adjust back to like more optimal strategy. late today but it's so nice to sleep in one day have a nice workout i was one and a half hours at the gym and just relaxed you know no rush it doesn't really matter if you miss first few levels on these kind of tournaments it's not a big deal at all i mean some people they argue that if you start early and the field is good then you have a you have more chance to build chips against weaker opponents and this way you gain advantage and some people prefer the other way around that they don't want to play deep stack and and uh, it is a fact that you are closer to the money already when you buy it late. Oh, it's this one. Table one, one, six, six, six last one. Do I need this now? No. Yours. Okay. Pretty nice. Thank you. Let's go. the man Jason Kuhn the man most, of the day at least the most successful player in the uh, history of Triton events so he did something really crazy actually here that he won two events more which made him to <laughs> have seven titles for now you, e you even came second in the PLO which was close yeah three would have been just too much anyways yeah. but <laughs> you have seven titles now I think no one has five yeah. next one is four on the line so I mean, Crazy. you won the main event today. It was also emotional yeah. for you, I saw. So yeah. anyways, how are you feeling? I feel great, man. I feel great. It's just, you know how these things are. They're a grind. I have a, a new baby at home and another one on the way. And I miss my wife and she's always cheering for me. And we were talking about coming into this thing. I was like, I really, you know, it's a big sacrifice for me to leave home and I'm going to really do my best to put something together for this trip. And you obviously don't have that much control over this stuff, but like, this trip's yeah. been insane, you know? So it was just, I was just very overwhelmed and, and grateful. There's a lot of things I, the audience wants to know. How much you have tournament winnings? About? Close to 50, I guess. 50, 50 million, million, something 50 close million. to that, I guess, after today. Maybe 48, yeah, something like good that. Good numbers, good numbers. Crazy. What got you in the first place to poker? Well, I was an athlete, uh, just like mm. yourself. Not as handsome as this guy, but I was an athlete. Um, I was a sprinter and I got hurt and uh, my buddies were like, hey, let's play some poker. You can't do anything else. And like from hand one, I was like, holy shit, I love this. Like, okay. And it's been, yeah, it's been that way ever <laughs> since, man. Yeah, you're one of the fittest guys yeah. ever played poker. So you come from a track and field, right? Uh -huh. yeah. And you're running 100 meters is your yeah. best. So what's your personal record of? Uh, official or unofficial? My official PR was in the 10 8s. It was a really long time ago. So nothing like crazy fast, but I'm from a cold climate state. So like running sub 11s was good and getting into the 10 8s in college was great. And 
like I said, my career got cut short, um, but I'm running low 11s right now at 37. At 37. Five. Which is pretty dope. Yeah. You are between the old generation and new generation. If I would yeah. put you in some kind of category, I think I qualify for dinosaur <laughs> in a way that I just, I'm just a little bit there. I was, yeah, I was cheering for you all the time. Whenever you were crushing yeah. full tilt, uh, I was cheering for you and the Dang Brothers and Ivy. And it's cool that you're all my buddies now because it's a real trip, but I am kind of a hybrid, like old school, new school kind of player. I play a lot of live poker, and but I played tons of online before. What's your take on the new generation? Like what they're doing good and what they're maybe missing? Yeah. And what maybe gives us still some advantage over them or, and vice versa? Yeah, so, you know, j the problem is with any kind of modern tools, when you're given like a, a concrete answer, people are very quick to start saying the words right and wrong. Yeah. And poker is just far too immensely difficult to say what's right and wrong. Like there are certain spots, you know, you have five big blinds on the button, you can shove these, these hands, whatever. That's a basic spot. But poker is, um, so psychological, it's about grit, you know, just sticking around, fighting. It's about finding little spots. It's using your soft skills to maybe, you know, there's a VIP player in the game and you might be able to figure out a way to trick him to give you all his chips in a way that a yeah. solver would never find, right? Yeah. So I, I think that the biggest problem, and I was guilty of this until my friend Eric Seidel actually called me out on it once. Um, I was kind of thinking in a bubble and he said, you know, a lot of these people that you judge and you laugh at what they do, if they've had a long history of success, maybe you should step back and kind of guess or ask why they're doing what they're doing. And, and since that happened to me, I had a big epiphany and I realized like, this game is like, we're all too flawed, you know? So I don't care if it's me, you, Ike, any of these like great players sitting there, we're, all, we're human beings. At the end of the day, we're gonna mess things up. And so I think that the, the new generation is somewhat solid, with fundamentals and oftentimes those fundamentals can carry them through really difficult spots. And at the end of the day, great fundamentals are really, really important. But the second that you start becoming really close-minded about something being wrong or right in poker, you're gonna limit yourself. I, I can see like, just uh, you're like one of your greatest strengths is you're mentally tough. You know, like you can see it, like you're never, you're never gonna give up in a situation ever, yeah. right? Like in, there are some younger guys that I see that in, but more often than not, I see overly talented guys that just break mentally. They're just like, they get jealous that somebody else is having success, which yeah. immediately hinders them, or they get um, connected to a stack and they end up losing a piece of it and then they give the rest of it away because their head just melts, you know? So I think um, just the mental game and tenacity and just like any other um, sport that you're going to be successful in, you have to just want to be there. You have to fight for every damn chip, you know? Yeah, you're right. And uh, when she talk about this mental toughness, like, it's really funny. So you won the sixth title here, yep. and I end up sending you a nice motivational uh, video. You get me hype, bro. If Almost you're like... a savage, <laughs> you're going to crush this I love that. modern, that modern, modern generation. <laughs> I was really... I was really pumped up and now look yeah. what you did. The savage, did. savage came and won another <laughs> one. So I'm always pulling for you and you're obviously like one of the nicest entertaining guys to be on TV, watch, play. Always nice, good game, social. Like, Thanks, man. I'm really, a lot. really fan. Hell yeah, I'm really fan of a uh, lot of guys actually and it's nice. I think poker is really just gonna be more popular and oh, yeah. better. From your sports background, how much do you think it has helped you with poker? A huge amount, just work ethic in general. And I think understanding that success takes a really long time, you know, understanding that like you really have to put in reps and that doesn't happen overnight. And just knowing that like the little wins every day can make mm -hmm. you better, you know? So I think realizing that it took me seasons and seasons and seasons to just get a 10th of a second faster here, here and here. I realized like, oh, you know, poker's the exact same way. You gotta show up, you gotta make mistakes, remember those mistakes, yeah. re redo it, you know, reiterate and, and be better. And yeah, it's just a slow game. It's about staying in the game, you know? I view poker as a sport, as a 
as a much more of a sport than a lot of oh, sports yeah. that qualifies for sport. It's yeah. you can play uh, 20 days you know. of poker and tell me how you feel. Yeah, how, how are we feeling now? I'm happy. My tournaments are finished. I'm yeah. flying to Vegas tomorrow oh. evening. Oh, you're gonna joining. you're gonna still grind some <laughs> sword deck, which you're really good. And oh, by the way, you did something amazing. You're in the hunt of the player of the year now because yes. you won this event. It's so great. you're you're leading it. Bananas, you, man. You're leading that thing, and also you have that even that side bonus side bet bonus that I heard about. Oh, so. Let's go, baby. So I'm trying I'm hard. I'm pulling for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pulling for you. Thanks, and brother. I just, yeah, so we just finished playing the PLO. You finished 12th, right? Yeah. I came, I went out after you, losing yeah. a, right. another we'll flip. So, so, anyways, thanks so much for, right. uh, for sharing. Yeah, yeah. of course. Okay. Man. I'm out from the last tournament, 30k PLO, finished 11th. No money on that one, but um, feeling very good about this event. Uh, it was the best tournament series for me. Got to play a lot. I made day two in every single event. And uh, like I said before, a lot of casts, a lot of close ones. I think I cast in four of the events. And the biggest one was a really good one, the 200k invitation also. Third place is very good there. So I'm mentally and physically exhausted, so very happy. <laughs> very happy now and already looking to, to fly to Vegas. I'm flying there in two days. Excited to play some cash games, which is my thing more. Um, I play much more cash than tournaments. So we'll have mixed games every day. And uh, I'll be in a very kind of nice schedule there, playing during the day. For me, it's like a really good lifestyle in Vegas, what I have. I'm, I'm living very healthy and enjoying, enjoying the life there whenever I'm there. But yeah, then it's gonna be after Vegas again, Triton in London, which, which will start in uh, end of July. So can I also make sure that I don't burn myself out in Vegas playing every day? It's gonna be another two weeks of high roller tournaments and uh, that's the next time you will see me play tournaments. I'll play just the main event in Vegas, which is the 10,000 buy-in and we'll see if I can make a long run in this one. Uh, it would be obviously a nice, nice one, but uh, it's the only tournament that I'll play for the World Series and, and I think we're gonna wrap it up. The Cyprus is an amazing place as a poker destination marriage. When you combine that with Triton, we have the most amazing poker tournaments. Looking forward to come back here. I, I hope we're gonna have event here again, like we did last September with Triton. So we're down here at Cyprus and see you guys soon.